All right, welcome to the Select Board meeting for Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. Uh, before we get started, would you please stand with me and let's salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and just for housekeeping, Mr. Todd Johnson will not be with us this, this evening. Um, it brings us into schedule items. We have no schedule items for 7 p.m. The next order of business is residents. Seeing none, moving right along. New business, MBTA community, multifamily housing requirement. We have Ms. Louder and Mr. Sadwick, I believe, that's gonna present. This is a very um, a hot button in the town today. I can assure you that, being on our agenda and a few social media uh, platforms. So without further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Alex, I am going to be giving the presentation on the MBTA community, but I just wanted to kind of give some context as to where this came from and um, what else was in the bill. So the governor signed in February of 2021 an act enabling partnerships for growth, and that bill had 113 sections to it was um, about 101 pages long. And the zoning sections in that bill were about five sections out of the 113 sections. There was um, $626 million that was in the bill that was authorized for economic development and housing spending. Um, and I noticed that Tewksbury was earmarked in there for $150,000 for economic development. So there's an earmark in this bill for us at some future date for economic development purposes. And the other money that was in this bill was for um, different types of loan programs or other types of state agencies that are doing housing and economic development. So the three sections that um, have been the most concerning to us related to um, zoning one of them um, was with changes to zoning, where changes to zoning now, because of this new act, if there is a housing zoning amendment, they can pass town meeting, they have to pass town meeting by a simple majority. So this was in effect at our annual town meeting and town council and myself kind of looked closely at this before um, that zoning article went to town meeting our um, recodification and both Kevin Feely and I felt comfortable at the time, given the guidance from the state, that we were okay in presenting the article on a two-thirds majority because so much was wrapped into that. The other item was um, changing the voting requirements for a special permit for housing. That went from a supermajority to a simple majority. And our first project, I think, that we faced with that was the former police station at 935 Main Street, where um, both Attorney Feely and I took a look at that and bounced what was um, being proposed with what was in this new law. And we found that the simple majority applied for that project. So the planning board voted um, for a simple, only had a simple majority voting requirement. I think they approved that unanimously. So that brings us up to this section, which is section 18 of the um, act, which is the MBTA communities. Guidance was originally put out on January 29th of uh, 2021. And then we didn't see an update until this past December. Um, December 15th, they posted the uh, new guidance, which is draft right now. And then they had a um, uh, webinar two weeks ago, I think, that um, was put on for people. So that was where Alex and I both believed that we wanted to get before the selectmen to talk about this as soon as possible. So I'll turn it over to Alex now. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chair and the board. So we're gonna get into the MBTA communities portion of the legislation that Mr. Sabak just discussed, and it concerns new multifamily housing requirements for MBTA and what are considered adjacent communities. So we'll start with what an MBTA community is. 
it's a city or town in Massachusetts that has some sort of MBTA transit, whether it's train, bus, ferry, or other services. It also includes communities that abut the communities that have the services. And Tewksbury is considered an adjacent community with MBTA services in Lowell, Dracut, uh, Billerica, and, or excuse me, not Dracut, uh, Lowell, Wilmington, Andover, and Billerica. Um, this bill requires us to have um, at least one zoning district of reasonable size, which is uh, in which multifamily housing is permitted as of right without need for discretionary approval. That does not mean that they can't go through a site plan review process with the planning board or any other board. It just means that there can't be any other barriers for it. Um, the requirements for MBTA adjacent communities, there is a minimum gross density of 15 units per acre. They can't be located more than a half a mile from commuter rail stations, subway stations, ferry terminal or bus stations. There can't be any age restrictions. It must be suitable for families with children. And as discussed in the previous slide, our district of a reasonable size must comprise of at least 50 acres total of land with at least 25 acres contiguous and no portion shall be smaller than five acres, which means that you can't take a bunch of one acre parcels or smaller and just push them all together and call that the district. Now, while these guidelines do prescribe um, that zoning enables the multifamily housing. This is not a mandate or requirement to build. It simply means that these districts have to be created to make it a by right use for um, establishing multifamily housing close to transit. This guidance was, um, was put down up by the state. As Mr. Sabic discussed, we attended a webinar put on by DHCD regarding the MBTA communities and how we can maintain interim compliance. So I've highlighted above that we have to create an action plan and that's something we have to put in place, um, I believe by this June so that it's effective, oh no, no later than 2023. So that just means we have to have at least demonstrated that we have a plan to implement the zoning. Next step is obviously implementing the actual action plan, then adopting the zoning amendments, which have to be adopted no later than December 31st, 2024. So while that is about two years away, it will come up quickly, which is why we wanted to get started on this process now. Once we submit that zoning uh, to the state, they'll determine whether that is in compliance with the MBTA community guidelines, um, and then at the bottom there, to remain in interim compliance, we do have to take a couple of actions before the end of this year. We have to submit a complete request for determination, meaning that we believe we already meet the zoning requirements, or we have to let them know that there is no current existing zoning that would meet compliance, and we have to propose the action to, um, our, our, to show our path and how we plan to get there. Now, a question that's definitely come up, as Mr. Chairman had noted um, in the community, is you know what are the consequences for this? On the surface, it means we lose out on a lot of grant money, potentially. Um, we would be no longer eligible for Housing Choice Initiative, uh, Local Capital Projects Fund, or Mass Works Infrastructure Programs. But there are also other implications, because the legislation does state that these communities shall comply. So while there is kind of a surface level issue of losing on a, a lot of like multi-millions of dollars of grant money. Um, there are probably other implications that we're just not aware of yet. And honestly, that's it. So if uh, you folks have any questions, me and Mr. Savick would be happy to answer to the best of our ability. All right, very good, short and sweet. All right, why don't we start, Mr. Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, great presentation, thank you. Lots of good information, um, not attempting to shoot the messenger here because I know this obviously you guys are not responsible for this but what's the upside to this for Tewksbury if any did I miss that part you know there there's the grant money but then again um, Alex had pointed out that with that comment that community shall have the zoning in place um, we run a legal risk. We just can't tell you what that is right now. Fair. Okay. So, and that was we lose access to those grants. Correct. Okay. Understood. Um, 
12, 25 contiguous. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot to chew on. I'm sure I will have more questions, but I'm good for right now. Thank you. How about uh, Ms. Stronach? Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much and welcome Alex in your new position. We appreciate you being here. Um, always good to have Mr. Sadwick present to us. Um, my question was the same as Selectman Mackey is what is the upside? And I think that you noted that there could be some things that we're not aware of yet. And I hope that when those become more visible to the town that we're able to come back and have some discussion on that. Um, I, do, um, I, I do appreciate that um, we have $150,000 in economic development that you mentioned earlier, but my concern is what we're, um, you alluded to, we're leaving a lot of money on the table, but is there any idea how much money we're leaving on the table? Uh, and I know that it's grant related, so it's what we would be eligible for, I guess, not necessarily would actually receive, correct? Correct. So we, we have one, um, one of those grants right now that we're operating under, which the Housing Choice Grant is for um, sidewalk construction right now on Route 38 from um, Colonial to Victor Drive, which is... Uh, I don't remember the number off the top of my head, if it's 190 or 202, but somewhere around $200,000 um, in one of those grants right now is gonna be putting sidewalks in on Route 38. So that's something that we, that is grandfathered in, but we won't be eligible for it in the future. Correct, if we don't pass this after 2000 or after 2024. So if we pass this, then we'll still be able to Eligible. apply for the grants. Just want to make sure that I am understanding it correctly. Thank you so much. I have no questions. How about Ms. Wellman? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for your presentation. So uh, we discussed this last week at our NIMCOG meeting as well, and I think I emailed some, a question to Ms. Shadwick. What does this mean for Tuxbury? So I appreciate you guys being here and already all over this. Um, with my understanding is that um, because we're an adjacent community, we have to be at 10% of our housing stock. So if we have 12,000 housing units, we need 1,200 multi, is it multifamily, minimum multifamily district Correct. to get at capacity. So the capacity in that district would have to be 1,200 units. Is that right? Yep. Not. So if we are already at 10% of our 40B affordable housing, that doesn't count toward this 10%. Correct. They're two different things. They're two different things. So I just wanted to be clear that they're different. Um, reading through the guidance that I saw, and I, I asked Alex about this before the meeting started, but um, affordability isn't mentioned in any part of this piece. So it's not talking about affordable housing, it's just talking about multifamily housing, is that correct? Correct. So is there any way to ensure that affordable housing is part of that? And how does it count toward our affordable housing stock if it's rental units, is that? So, see I'm going with this? That's a really, that's a good question. Um, as Alex had pointed out, the bit about having to come up with a plan as to how we would achieve that zoning, that would be something that we would look at. Right now, the town's um, zoning, both existing and what's being proposed, has a 15% affordable requirement in it. Mm -hmm. um, that may be a little bit more challenging to try and enforce on a by right use, mm -hmm. but we would still take a look at that and see if there's mechanisms available to, to do that. Um, do you have the ability to ask for additional guidance or send in questions um, to whatever authority is doing Yeah, I, yes. Okay. So I think that would That's be, a good question to ask. I would ask that one. And um, I would also ask for NBTA adjacent communities, what's the expectation and how realistic is it that we're going to have one, we're going to have a district within half a mile of a facility? Did you want to take that one? Sure. Yeah. So um, during the webinar, they, and in some of the guidance, they mentioned that it doesn't have to necessarily be within a half a mile of the actual MBTA station, mm -hmm. but it can be within a half a mile of 
transportation that would connect you to that kind of um, MBTA station. So we have the LRTA that right. runs through. And while the LRTA is not MBTA and doesn't count as an MBTA service, it would be counted, counted as a connecting service. Right. So Perfect. where we have a, you know, a, a healthy amount of LRTA stops in town, yeah. that would probably be more of our target. Okay, all right, so that's great. Um, I appreciate it's a, it's a confusing piece of new um, regulation that we have to start to comply with. And so I appreciate you bringing this forward to us as soon as possible. And as we go forward, trying to identify where that district will be, will be challenging. So I appreciate your work. Thank you very much. Okay, very good. So I do have some questions. Um, first and foremost, just for the residents, we're kind of first out of the gate, right? This is fresh off the press. It was voted, I think, signed and, and let, you might have said it, uh, Mr. Salwick, January 14th. But the bottom line is we're getting in front of this before probably most of the 75, I'm going to call them adjacent communities like us, like Tewksbury. Is that a fair assessment? Right. Yes. Okay. So just to go back to the time frames, because I want to say, you know, we're, this is, Fresh off the press, we're reviewing it now, but can we go back to the time frames? That's, yes. So the sky is not falling just yet. So what's the initial, so just to go through the process as you understand it, because we have some time to plan. So you guys are gonna get together and start planning and strategizing. How, will this, will this may may not tie into the current zoning bylaws underway now, Mr. Sandwick? Uh, the attempt here has been to try and keep them separate, namely because, um, that, that was a five-year going on to six-year effort to try and clean up a number of other items in the zoning bylaw. And I don't think that the, um, well, we brought this to the committee's attention back on December 20th, I think it was, and basically noted that it was not part of their charge or their mission because that law was not in effect at the time that the selectmen appointed that committee. And I think, um, to do both initiatives justice, they should be separate. Agreed, yeah. So the intent was to try and bring forward that zoning bylaw um, with the tweaks that have been made um, since uh, September to the Maytown meeting. And then um, in the meantime, Alex and I will be working on putting together a plan. And you know the plan will um, probably be rolled out shortly after that and we'll pick up um, and start working on how we could achieve what's being asked for us in this program. Okay, for the plan, what's the due date for the actual, for, for Tewksbury to have a plan? Is it the July 31st, 2023? That's for an interim plan. The, the final zoning has to be submitted no later than December 31st, 24. Okay, so we have some time. Yeah. Right. Okay. And if I could add to Mr. Sadwick's yes. sentiment, um, I think if we can get the, the zoning bylaw recodification cemented, I think it'll set us up much better to be able to implement the kind of zoning that's required for this legislation. Okay, totally agreed, totally agreed. And just to go through the process, so we have um, a couple of years, right? December 24, not to rush it. So that would go through your office. Now, just as far as like the, the, the call flow, the workflow, would it come back to the board ultimately, the planning board and the town meeting? Would you have any understanding where it go? You know what I mean? What's the workflow there? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question because um, right after we finished this conversation on the MBTA communities, I just wanted to tag in about um, housing initiatives and where we're gonna go with that. But I think um, as we develop this plan, I have um, no problem bringing it back to the selectmen as a draft plan just so that you can look at it and understand it and um, assist us in communicating that to the public. So I, I would look to bring it back to the board. Okay. Now, was this something, and again, if, if you don't know the answer, that's fine because this is, you know, it's new and so you might not have all the answers. We, can, we have plenty of time to do homework. Is this something that would have to go in front of town meeting for approval? Yeah. The zoning article would have to. The zoning, correct. Right, yep. Which is the ultimate um, product of this. But the planning and how we're going to get there um, doesn't have to go to town meeting, but I think that the board of selectmen, the select board could offer us um, some valuable input in how to get to that point. Okay, and just for me personally, I mean, I don't want to debate the bill, but even a two thirds, that's a game changer. Two thirds now as um, simple majority 
for housing. For, for, for housing, correct. zoning. Yep. And the super majority for the planning board. And the last but not least is this, this mandate. Yeah. Right? Okay, um, Ms. Stronach piggybacked something, and again, it's all new, but if we were to look at the dollars based on, I think they put three different categories of potential revenues that would come from the state to the town. Can we look back at those three different buckets and say, okay, over the last five years, this is how much we received in these three buckets, and these how much we would potentially jeopardize in receiving state funds? Yeah, although I think, um it was more than those three, wasn't it? Oh, it was definitely more than those three. I just pulled these out because I know that we have had um, we've had projects funded by these. So you know, it would carry a little more weight than perhaps programs that we've never um, applied to before. So it could be a dangerous game. We put up some resistance, but at the end of the day, it's a mandate. And the end of the day, we're going to have to do it. Just like the stormwater, it just brings back memories of the stormwater. Yeah. It's a mandate. You will Tuxbury do this in a certain time frame and then $75 later per resident, here we, here we you know, brought over, this is gonna be, the, I think this is gonna be a hot ticket as well for the town. What can we do as a community? I think the good thing is 75 other communities in our same boat. So I like the word maybe a coalition, just to maybe see what some of the uh, adjacent towns or cities are going to do in lieu of this, just to get creative. Maybe we have other ideas because this is gonna, like I said, I think this snowball is gonna get a lot bigger and we just happen to be first out of gate, if you would. Um, That's a good point. I had a couple other th um, points to note. I mean, I think it's important for the residents to, I did watch the web, um, the webinar, like you said, it was put on January 13th. I thought it was pretty telling. A lot of the words in there, choice words. House, housing crisis, get cars off the road, uh, good housing policy, provide equity and fair housing, more choices for diversity for our home options, good climate policy, and I could go on and on and on. So again, it's, you know, it's a policy mandate being shoved down our throats, and I, um, hopefully there's still time to get creative, because for me, again, just hearing this, and our residents too, it was a knee-jerk reaction, like, here we go. You know, it's not part of our characteristic. That's why we moved to the suburbs, you know, and, and now here we are. So again, I'm no, um, that's probably sharing a little bit of emotion through this, um, I did have a few more questions. How about back to the board for quite any more questions or comments? Just looking forward to hearing more as it unrolls. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take your comments back to NIMCOG. We do have a regional planning agency, so to your regionalization point, um, and see if other communities are. We were just digesting this as well last week, so the responses haven't come back from the towns yet. So I'll take your comments and the comments of this board back to NIMCOG as we go forward. And if we go to the Massachusetts site, you can, as a community, as a select board or any board for that matter, we can, you know, you can submit input as to why this may or may not work for your community. So I think it's probably in our best interest. You know, I think it's gonna be literally a waste of us, you know, typing on the keys, but however, it's probably in our best interest maybe to huddle. Uh, we don't have to do it collectively, but just raise some of our concerns, you know, initially is infrastructure. You know, we can zone it, and what's the saying? If you zone it, they will build. You, you know, so, so that's, if we zone it, it's gonna be an opportunity to have, you know, implement something to this magnitude. And just initial thought, again, it's all kind of knee-jerk reaction, and a bit emotional, is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Water, sewer, schools, the list can go on and on and on and on. And, you know, we could probably take some stuff that's, um, some of the stuff we're doing or have done in the last year, and maybe work through that and push that through the state because they're real concerns uh, for the community. So again, I'm not a big fan um, and we'll just have to work through it. And like I said, I really look for a coalition, Mr. Montori, through you, through Mr. Sadwick, to say what are other towns and, and, and communities doing in lieu of you shall do, you will do um, A, B, and C. I just don't think it's right, so. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Please. To piggyback on it, um, there's a map in some of the guidance. I don't know if you can put it online um, or I can send it to you. Um, that shows pretty much all of Eastern Massachusetts is, yeah. you know, subject to this. My question, based on thinking about what you were saying and, and what Mr. Kelly said, what are the chances that we might already be in compliance if we're looking at parcels that are along 38 and some of the development that's already gone on? Um. 
I say it's less than a 50% chance, okay. but, but um, we will take a closer look at that okay. um, and identify areas that we think, there are some places where we have a little bit higher densities. It's interesting though, um, places, places such as um, Balsam Place and Jones Farm, where you would think is a high density area, they're really, I, I think they run maybe between 10 to 12 units per acre. So they don't even meet the 15 units per acre. They're not as as dense as um, as this would be. Because the developable acres, it includes the entire parcel within that's developable, not just the part they built well, on. Well, that's when you look at, when I gave you those raw numbers. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. They would, it would include the entire parcel. Now we need to go back and take a look at the guidance that was provided by the state. They may they may be looking at it from a different perspective, yeah. excluding wetlands and okay, interesting unbuildable. So, so we have to look at that. Yeah, there's some more some more room for information. Yep. Okay, well, thank you. This it's going to be quite a journey. Mm -hmm. and just how about the planning board as well? Is this something you're going to socialize with the planning board? You kind of may 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 or may not come in their their preview. Uh, we can take it to the planning board. Yeah, and the only thought process is they might give you feedback that we're just not thinking about different feedback, yeah. you know, because then they're in there to the zoning and building and development. So it just might be a good little um, opportunity to socialize with them and get and receive their feedback as well as a community, as a town, as a board. So I'm yeah. sorry, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, one more question. Uh, did you mention this was draft guidance? Yes. Okay, who's putting this guidance out? Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development. And is this the first draft or have there been multiple? This is the first. It's the okay. first. So where those timelines though aren't draft, correct? For the, those, those dates are hard set by the legislature? Or? They're in the, no, those are in the guidance. Okay. So there is still opportunity for some of this to change based on yep. some of those 75 communities possibly pushing back? Or, yep. Okay, understood, thank you. Any questions from the board? Okay, Alex and Mr. Sauer, thank you very much. And again, we're not shooting a message. Yeah. We're going to work with you. You know, we're going to work with you. Um, you know, for a po hopefully for a positive outcome from the community. I'm sorry. Did, did you add one more thing you wanted to say? I did. Um, I just wanted to say that you know I understand everybody's trepidation with this, and you know, balking at this being framed as an, a state mandate. But that's why we wanted to start this nice and early, because as Mr. Mackey noted, these deadlines may get pushed out depending on the feedback they get from communities and. Mm -hmm. We're looking at this more as a unique opportunity to be able to show Tewksbury as a trailblazer and see what we can do with the legislation to make sure it's something that serves our community and, you know, serves the state as well. Yeah, and then just I guess one final piece too is we have the affordable trust fund as well in lieu of money. I don't know how that may or may not tie into it because again, we have to just allocate the zoning and not quote unquote develop it as a town. That's going to be for an independent contractor or builder, what have you. But maybe just think of that that those that body of money there. Um, again, just we have to consider everything on the table in our best interests. So thank you. Did you want to? So, so we will do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> The, the last thing that housing related that I just wanted to um, point out to the board because we've talked about this for uh, a while um, with the housing partnership resignations that occurred mm -hmm. uh, there was a question as to how were things going to be handled going forward and so I took a look at the website and where we had responsibilities underneath um, the housing partnership so you'd see here where things were formally assigned to the LHP and then the right-hand column is what the, the future plans would be. And just on that first one of developing affordable housing action plans based on housing need studies, I have here um, for future plans during the next DLTA round, which was a district local technical assistance grant round, um, staff will be applying to DIMCOG for an update to our affordable housing production plan, which is due to expire June of 2022. That DLTA um, announcement just came out today, so it's sitting in our inboxes, and um, we'll get that out tomorrow to them to let them know that we wanted um, them to assist us with the affordable housing production plan. So you can kind of go through there and just see that, um, you know, establishing criteria for affordable housing proposals, the staff can assist the selectmen in that. 
making recommendations on the um, pros and cons. We can do that at the staff level. Identifying local and state federal housing resources for further development, that has been ongoing at the staff level. So there's a lot of things that um, we continue to do at the staff level. The one thing that um, it's number, the second one from the bottom where it says increasing public awareness through forums and other public events, that I believe will need some more strategic thinking and development of a plan. And um, you know, there's where the select board could be of assistance with, with staff and trying to get information out. And then I think down at the bottom of this sheet, um, I mentioned that we did have um, requests for proposals for three um, affordable sites and that was out on the central register in November. Unfortunately, what we did receive for that came in um, too late um, the day that it was due. So we're gonna be going back out again um, with requests for that. And uh, at least one organization will have their um, bid packages ready um, for us to review and submit immediately. But it would be open for any um, not-for-profit to bid on those um, housing sites. So it was just a recommendation that we do not, like you kind of reinstate if you would, our local housing authority? That's up to you. Okay. <laughs> okay, what we'll do is we'll put on a future, let's, let's digest this, and I like Mr. Johnson here, and what we can do, weigh the pros and the cons, and just, I'll put it on the agenda and have that open discussion with the board. Does that sound reasonable? I think it's reasonable if I can just re react to a couple no, of Exactly, in lieu of not having a, um, a, a committee, right? Sure, sure. Yep. Uh, yeah, for the local housing. I think it's a great idea to bring it back and we can discuss it. Vis-a-vis um, -vis the, um, the bids that we're going to go out, I think it would be good when you rebid it to also offer to the agencies we'd like to have bid, yep. like a bid conference um, at some point, so to kind of get on their radar screen. And, um, and I did reach out to CTI to see if they'll come to the table. Yep. And then, because um, that was a very good proposal that you put together. And um, I'm happy to help out with any public outreach. So, if Thank that you. Help, offline. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Awesome Can job. Can I just make one comment Please. as well? Um, if we go up to the top of the document, um, where the first responsibility is the housing plan, I just want to note for people who are paying attention, I believe Nim Cog helped us with our last housing plan. So I just want people to understand that that is not something new and different. That is what we have done in the past. And then the um, local housing partnership worked on that. Um, that is a five year plan and um, it is a big heavy lift. So um, I think it does warrant um, some type of uh, work, not only from staff, but maybe from this board. So I think there's a little piece that could be kind of augmented there mm -hmm. in terms of just handing it to um, NIMCOG and um, you know staff in terms of how that plays out because that is a pretty critical piece when it comes to grant funding and something that um, really has to be solidified for the town to maximize. So um, I know that sometimes with NIMCOG, they have a lot of other things on their plate. So I just want to make sure that we're all aware of that. Okay. All right, we're going to close on that topic because I think Mr. Salk, you might stay right there for a second. Yep. All right, we're going to move to the next order of business. It's 319, 321, 323, Master Street Limited um, discharge, discharge of dredged and fill materials. Um, Restriction, that's a mouthful. So I did watch the meeting, I think it was back in May, uh, and we, de we did see the, um, the paperwork, and I think it was a yay vote for the Conservation Committee. So you just want to touch upon this quickly? Sure. Please. There, um, this, this came from the applicant, and I um, double-checked with our conservation agent, um, Joe Fontaine, about this. But their, their DEP had requested that there be a 401 water quality certification under those regulations. But as part of that, um, the applicant has the ability to put a restriction on their property, which kind of serves as the same purpose as the water, quali water um, quality certification would. So what they're presented the town with is this grant of restriction and 
if we find it acceptable, then both the um, select board and the conservation commission would sign off on it. And it would just prevent them from um, filling or dredging um, up to that 500 square feet in accordance with the original order of conditions that was approved by the conservation commission. So it's kind of a, I hate using cliches, but it's like a belt and suspenders here. We have the order of conditions in place, but we're also putting this restrict, they're offering us this restriction on their property. Okay, did, just so this did not go already go in front of the Conservation Commission, I thought it did back in May, I watched the video. For so the this order was something different than, it would yeah. describe the same exact lot, the 500, yes. how they move the, yes. yeah. So they still have to, this has to go in front of the, the Conservation Commission? Yes. Okay. Well, I would, I'll follow your recommendation because you're involved. I mean, just thinking out loud is why wouldn't the conservation, they're the experts here as opposed to us, but I think it's, but we, you, you, I'll look for your guidance and I'll open it up to the board for questions. I, th I okay. I thought the conservation um, commission already voted yay affirmative, so okay. They voted for the order of conditions and this is part of the order of conditions. This would help implement the order of conditions. So action is required from the from the board tonight, and that enables, this is our piece of it. So this right. was the responsibility right. of the select board to do that in the part of the order of conditions. Okay, that right. makes sense. I, it's a good I just want to make sure that the Conservation Commission can't come back and say, wait a minute, you know, I, I give them the authority in, in these particular cases, but. That's fine. And but, then it goes back to them? Goes back to? The Water Commission? The uh, conservation. conservation Commission. Correct. The, the commission, when they're signing off on this, I mean, this, they are they are basically certifying that. Um, yeah, both both boards are going to have to sign off on it. And what's your recommendation? If I can have the selectmen's vote tonight, subject to the. Conservation Commission's approval, then we'd have your votes, and it'd be just a matter of collecting signatures after Commission approves it. What does the board think? I'd be more comfortable with that. Again, I, the, the, I want to, I think the Conservation Commission sh should be uh, right of patches first to vote on this. This is their uh, area of expertise. It seems like a formality, but again, that's just me. What's the board, what's, what's the board think? So just a question uh, to, help my understanding. So they have an order of conditions that was already approved. DEP requested something for water quality and this is the, checks it, that box? Yes, this checks that box. Okay, so does not require a change to the order of conditions. Correct. Perfect, okay. And then in, in that case, I'm comfortable with the, pending the approval of Conservation Commission. Okay. I have a motion, I have a second. I'll second that. All those in favor, single by saying aye. Aye. Aye, Janimus, thank you very much. Any, any other business, Mr. Sadwick? I think you're good to go. I'm done for tonight. Okay, thank <laughs> you guys very much. Thank you, Alex. Thanks. Okay. All right, Mr. Montori, moving right along. We have the Mass... Alex. Thank you. We have the Massachusetts Alcohol Beverages Control, A better known as the ABCC. I think we have some good news there as far as grants for Tewksbury additional alcohol licenses. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Um, we were informed uh, by the ABCC that um, due to the federal census, we've had an increase in alcohol, uh, additional alcohol licenses in the community. Um, our restaurant, All Alcoholic, went from 30 licenses to 33 licenses. Our restaurant, Wine and Malt, went from six to seven. Our all alcoholic retail package went from six to seven and our wine and malt retail package licenses went from six to seven. Uh, this increase is in addition to the special legislation that the board um, uh, sent to our delegation and that was passed um, uh, a, little, a little over a year ago uh, that uh, added uh, five additional restaurant all alcoholic licenses uh, to the community as well as two beer and wine restaurant license, licenses to the community. Uh, those special legislation licenses uh, need to be used by February of 2024, so there is a time frame on those, uh, but the overall news is that we do have additional licenses in the community to utilize. That's it. Very good news for potential business owners. Uh, Ms. Stronach. 
I, um, thank you so much. I was uh, just wondering of our restaurant license, because um, that puts us at 38, if my math is correct. How many do we have currently? For all restaurant, all alcoholic? Yeah. We have 30. 30? We went to 33. Plus the five for the legislation, the so yep. that's 38, 38, right? Correct. And how about um, the restaurants, because now we're up to nine, where we were at six? So for restaurant, beer and wine? Yeah. We were at six, we're now at seven. With okay. the additional legislation, we have another two, so we're at nine. Okay, and um, I guess the reason for my uh, question is, and I'm really excited about the um, other two uh, coming in, but one of the things that I'm asking is that legislation was passed a year and nobody's taken us up on those additional licenses. Not yet. Is there, um, when we're working on that economic development, is that something that people are aware that we have licenses? That's, I'm just curious if... So we, we have been approached by various people um, and they've shown interest. So, okay. and then COVID hit so that yep, set right. people back but we do have a couple of people that are looking at uh, licenses right now okay i just want to make sure people there has been much, there's, been, there's been a lot of interest in the all alcoholic retail packet yep. store license so the additional one there will get a fair amount of interest yep okay thank you so much okay very good any other questions? All right, very good. Mr. Montori, the floor, you can continue. I think we have a town council yeah, invoice. I think we, we have one town council bill. Um, the um, town council's bill in the amount of $3,187.50 for the time frame of December 16th through the 31st. Uh, I'd recommend approval. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion, I have a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous floor, zero. Anything else, Mr. Motori, on your side? Um, just one quick thing. I know a uh, notice went out to residents uh, regarding the uh, THM levels for our water. Um, and um, I know we, we received some phone calls, but I just want to uh, touch upon that, that uh, we, were, we were required to send that notice out because we were above the maximum contamination limit um, in, in the 12-month cycle of the past year. Um, and until we get past that 12-month cycle when we had that uh, high uh, contamination limit, um, we still have to send out that notice every quarter. But our levels have been going down, and we're under the maximum contamination limit. Um, we have been, um, but because we're still within that 12-month limit, that triggered the notice. So uh, we believe that when we get to the next quarter uh, and pass that uh, maximum contamination level hit that we had, uh, we won't have to send out any more notices. But uh, Melissa Woodbury, the chemist at the water treatment plant, has done an outstanding job uh, getting our samples uh, lower. Uh, and our tests, uh, uh, testing lower, uh, and we're confident that uh, we'll uh, be out of the um, the uh, the uh, area of that uh, Department of Environmental Protection requires notice going out. What drinking water is safe to drink? We have no issues. Uh, we're going. We've gone in the right direction. Did all the right things. You know, a lot of it, uh, the cons problems we had uh, were because of the um, the uh, water source that we have, the Merrimack River. Uh, but um, there is no danger to the public. It, it was a notification we had to send out. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All righty. Um, brings us to minutes. We have no minutes. I do believe um, next meeting, which is set for January 20, oh, we need to update the agenda. Uh, it's in February. But next meeting, I know we're going to have a bulk, um, a bunch of minutes to review. So that's the next meeting. Bring us the board member reports. How about Mr. Mackey? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, short and sweet. We website is finally ready to go. Uh, there'll be an announcement coming out soon on when that's going live, as well as the explanation of what this phase for the redo of the website does and what future phases may entail. Um, so we finally got there. We are now finalizing on the date and more information to follow very shortly. Cool. Good deal. Thank you. How about Ms. Stronach? Thank you. Um, the elementary building committee met, met on January 13th, as I noted at our last meeting, um, lots of really good activity going on with that project. I do want everyone to be aware that they did have a school staff walk through of the building and had some mock-up classrooms. 
um, that was available to teachers to attend if they wanted to attend. Um, and I guess the next milestone that kind of the board, the committee talked about is the removal of the center school. Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be work on that project that is going to impact that area. Um, it will be cordoned off. It's not gonna be an explosion. They are going to be um, taking it down almost brick by brick, sort of speak. And I just want people to know that um, that is happening and um, <laughs> they're getting it ready this summer. So you'll see a lot of activity. I do want to note for the committee's um, information that we uh, may have to be working with the athletic director and potentially looking at a short term and um, look at the facility of the um, field when we go offline as they set that place up. Um, I don't think it'll be for the entire summer, but there, the we have charged the project manager and the construction team to come back with the committee about that so that I just want to put it on people's radar that that is a big milestone that's coming up in terms of that project and it could have some impact um, with use of the facility for the summertime. Uh, then the other thing we're moving forward with technology and um, furniture and equipment which means we're getting close. So it's really um, exciting. And lastly, I know that tomorrow um, we're a meeting at the fire station. Unfortunately, I will not be able to attend that meeting due to the time of the meeting, but I did want to ask the town manager if we could schedule another time for me to do that walkthrough. Absolutely. Yep. I'm really excited about that project as well. So thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I have nothing else. Good stuff. Thank you, Ms. Stronach. How about Ms. Wellman? Uh, thank you very much. I had a quick question for Mrs. Stronach. Is there an opportunity to tag along on a different walkthrough for the elementary school for public officials who'd like to go. I can certainly bring that to the committee and make that available um, at our next meeting. I'll talk about that. Our next uh, building meeting is February 10th. So I will bring that to the committee and I'm sure that we can make that arrangement. That would be wonderful. Just to piggyback on something, nothing special, but you know, an already pro forma thing that's happening. So yep. that'd be great. It would be wonderful. So thank you so much yes. for that. Um, okay, so I have a few things. Um, I wanted to thank Mr. Montori and Brian Gilbert and um, Kevin Hardiman for setting up a tour of the DPW for uh, the select board last week and some members of the press. Uh, Mr. Mackey attended, Mr. Johnson attended, and I attended. Um, it's, I've walked through the facility before, uh, back when the item was brought forward to town, uh, I think on the budget and then to town meeting. Um, the facility was built in the 1950s and while it's been very well cared for, um, and our, our staff are doing a great job of caring for that building. It's very worn. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how the plans are going to be modified as we go forward. Um, and I know that the town manager and staff are working very hard um, with their consultants to bring the budget in, into line. So very excited about the work that's being done there and um, how we will better serve um, the community through the um, improvements there and for our humans that work there. Um, uh, on to NIMCOG. NIMCOG's come up a couple of times tonight. Um, so there's been some interesting staffing maneuvers there. Justin Howard, um, who is our, has primarily been working with um, transportation. He does the tip. He does a lot of that stuff. Um, he's been now made the assistant director. Um, we had, excuse me, an executive director search and we did hire somebody for that position. Um, that person resigned after four days. So we have to put the position out again. You, you drove him out that quick? I, I didn't even meet him. I didn't even meet him other than through the search. Yeah, so, um, so that was unexpected. Uh, so we will, be, we will be reposting that position. Um, and it's also, uh, they're down a planner. And the reason I brought this up is because Mrs. Stronach talked about the DLTA process. And it's a lot of alphabet soup for folks that aren't you know, really into it. We are. But it is a lot of work and they are understaffed at the moment, which also means that they are under-revenued uh, because it's all about hours that they put through this stuff. So these are complications, but they're doing a great job adapting and uh, hopefully the board will be able to um, get a new executive director in. That's great soon. Um, 
one of the things that came up today, and it's something I've been following, um, and I know everybody's interested in what's going on with the Route 38 construction. Um, and I know that staff had a pre-construction meeting today on that project, which is slated. I know there's not a schedule available yet, but it's slated to start April. Construction will begin on Route 38 in April for the first time in like 40 years. So it's going to be disruptive. And I think everybody will kind of be a little bit hallelujah about it because we've been wanting this in the town for so long, but it's going to be disruptive. And I, my understanding is that that work will continue through September 2023. So one of the things I asked um, Mr. Hardiman to bring forward to DOT, um, and I also mentioned it to Mr. Montori, is that I am requesting that DOT do a robust public outreach program that we can repurpose on our website, but it is their responsibility to create the material so that our residents know what projects are going on, what part it's being worked on any given week, that our businesses know the impacts. We've had other work done on Route 38, like underground work, and it's impacted access to businesses from time to time. And in the summertime, and for some businesses, like if I had known, I would have gone on vacation, for instance, or I would have closed for this week. So I want everybody to be well aware of what's going on. I know they can do this. We've done this in other communities. I don't know if they'll want to hire um, Howard Stein Hudson or another firm to work on the public outreach for them, but they can do this work. And so it's my request that um, they do this public outreach so that we keep our residents and our businesses informed through this full process. Um, so I wanted to bring that to the board. Um, and then finally, uh, the DEI survey has been approved in draft form by the DEI committee. The next step is for it to be loaded into SurveyMonkey in a preview form. Um, and I understand that Ms. Louder will be working with um, one of the members of our committee, Mason Dunn, to do that so that all of it's set up the way that we want it to be set. Then it will be brought back to this board and to town staff for feedback before we publish it out to the, the public. So you'll have a chance to look at that and give us some feedback before we send it out. Um, our next meeting is February 10th, so we hope to have this before you before then, okay? And G, no, good, great updates, um, as well. How about just to set expectations as far as Route 38? Is it old Boston Road to Colonial? Do you know the subset? Do you know the section of 38? Yeah, uh, Colonial, yeah, to Old yeah, Boston it's Road. That, it's in that area. Okay. And then is the plan to get the additional mileage, whatever the, the, the mileage is, for the whole completion, ultimately from end to end, to get on the tip? Because right now that's done on the tip, the five year plan. The no, we're just opening the tip. Correct. I think tomorrow is Correct. the next discussion. But the plan is to get the next final section on there, if not sooner. Yeah. Okay, awesome, very good. And I'll have more details of the actual um, approach to construction and I'll send it out to the board. Yeah. And that's a good call out about the businesses. We did, um, even when we do, we did miss the mark, um, you know, prior, so that's a good call out about the businesses and giving a heads up to the businesses and local owners. They can so plan. That 100%. Just, just yeah. so that they can plan and residents can plan their moves. I know there's lots of, it's going to be a lot of, in fact, it's going to be one down to one lane. You know, we've all experienced yep. that here in other communities. So, but I know that they can do a good public outreach program and I want us to be able to do that. And, and it's going to require targeting and possibly going door to door to go to businesses and give them the information. So it's, it's, a heavy lift, but it's an important one. Yep. And Great. It can be done. Yep. Great call out. Okay, and we're going to meet with the reuse committee next week, or it's the flip. I'll have another update for the reuse committee uh, during our next select board meeting. So that's all I had. So, any, Mr. Martin, any other questions, comments? Like, one alibi, please. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't call out the uh, open forum we had for the zoning bylaw last week. Um, we had less attendance than we've had at previous meetings, which I'm taking as a good thing. Um, we've taken a number of uh, phone calls, emails, responses, uh, feedback at the open forums, and that that feedback is 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 dying down. Which uh, again, believe is a good thing because it means we've addressed the questions. We're moving forward, and hopefully, we will have. Uh, I'm confident that we will have something that will pass when we get up to town meeting. Um, if anyone has any last minute comments, questions, concerns, our next meeting is February 2nd. It is not a public forum, but any last minute thoughts or concerns that you would like to be addressed that have not previously been addressed, please make sure that they are in before February 2nd. Thank you. Very good. Anything else? Okay, very good. With that, I uh, look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion second. and a second. All those in favor, signal aye. 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 Aye.